All right, Tunjay Taimaz <clears throat> is a professor of geophysics and seismology at Istanbul Technical University. He joins me now live from Istanbul. Professor, six days now since these two earthquakes have hit. I'm wondering what have you been able to learn uh, about them? Is there valuable information that you as a professor of geophysics and seismology can gain from these earthquakes? Yes, indeed. Uh, as far as earthquake seismology is concerned, since the last 2020 earthquakes, we have learned that these shallow strike slip, continental strike slip faults are triggering and transferring stress and strain from one to another point to the adjacent divergent plate boundaries. And the most surprising one for me was the magnitude of 7.9, even possibly 8 on Richter scale. And we know that around the globe there are earthquakes uh, creating magnitude 7.9 or similar or higher uh, ones, uh, like in uh, Kathmandu, Nepal, uh, Kunlun fault in China or Renchen in China. So there are a few examples already that we know as far as science is concerned. But in Turkey, along the North Anatolian fault zone or East Anatolian fault zone or in, even in the bordering countries like Iran to Syria, we have earthquake doublets. So the back-to-back -back earthquakes are occurring within a, about nine to 10 hours. So we had examples in 2020, already a couple of examples. And the last big one was 13 to 15 March, 1992. This was the location where we had the largest ever record, recorded earthquake in, on 26 December, 1939, Erzincan earthquake. Since 39, this is the largest ever recorded one. And yet, this uh, produced big magnitude 7.6 earthquakes on Richter scale on a surrounding nearby fault or another segment called Surgu fault, which is again left lateral but in different orientations. So from space geodesy to field geology, seismology and seismotectonics observations provide beautiful, fruitful data sets for just for the scientific fantasy, of course, and for the future understanding of the earthquake phenomenon. But for the layman on the street, of course, search and rescue and shelter, food recovery, health uh, facilities and and so on is more important than the scientific data set. But this uh, produced an excellent example for, for the uh, evolution of Earth's surface processes. That's uh, thanks to the NASA or European Space Agency. They are freely providing the space geodetic data for every spin of a mm. satellite, satellite passes through the region. So it's already more than 10 cities uh, damage along over 400 kilometer long uh, fault on the first Earth uh, and it's influenced the neighboring countries like Syria, Lebanon, Palestine, up to Israel, and even some part of Cyprus. Eventually, at the ends of these rupture points, there will be stress transfer. Within 10 to 20 years' time, we will have possibly similar magnitude 7 or higher earthquakes that we know from the historical and paleoseismological data sets that are in our hands. But so it's not surprising, but the damage was surprising. That means as a Turks or Turkish, we are not learning or getting lectures on one of another earthquake that we face almost every other 10 years. This is scary, and this is not the case as far as science is concerned. Pro Professor, I'm wondering, the UN aid chief says that this is the worst event to hit this region in 100 years. I'm wondering about the destructive power of these earthquakes, because a 7.7 .7 magnitude earthquake, of course, is very powerful. But uh, by comparison to some of those other earthquakes that you mentioned, which were far more powerful, yet this one was particularly destructive. Is it because of the shallowness of the earthquake and not necessarily uh, well, the strength of it? That's true. These are earthquakes are shallow, occurring at a depth of about 10 to 12 kilometer. But I have calculated myself from my own research, certainly this earthquake's magnitude not less than 7.9. In one occasion, I calculated 7.98. So it's equal to around 8 magnitude. But the 1939 earthquake was similar, 7.9 to 8. So the, uh, the reported value is certainly out of the uh, level. It's not true. 
So it's certainly about 7.9, the first one, the main shock. Then, of course, there's a question if it's a, this is a main shock, aftershock couple, but it's an earthquake doublet. And considering the length of the fault rupture, over 400 kilometer, and a 50 kilometer length at the width, at a depth of 10 kilometer, that I calculated displacement at that depth or hypocenter about 9 meter. And it's a left lateral. And the whole rupture from Nur Dağı to Hazarji towards the northeastern uh, direction along the East Anatolian Fault was about 75 80 percent of energy is released. Then all of a sudden, from Nur Dağı to its Syrian border, another 30 percent is released. So this is a bilateral rupture. And it's triggered or transferred straight in either end. And that's why within nine hours, we received another 7.6. And for, for this size of earthquakes and aftershocks, will certainly go over uh, a year or so. Remember, on 1999, Gölcük and Düzce earthquakes, we had a, another earthquake couple, 7.4 and 7.2, within three months interval, along the same fault line. So these shallow strengths of faults, about 7.5, they trigger each other next segment, whichever the weakest point. And, and it's not surprising, of course, for seismologists, scholars, okay. but for the layman, uh, and after 10 years uh, experiencing similar earthquakes, okay. it's a bit embarrassing uh, with today's technology. Okay, we're going to leave it there for now. Professor Tunjai Taimaz, uh, Professor of Geophysics and Seismology at Istanbul Technical University, thank you very much. And do stay with TRT World for our continuing coverage of the devastating earthquakes in Turkey and Syria.